All right, everyone, in this video, we're going to be looking at the setup and installation for ViewPress. So let's go to our ViewPress tutorial three, setup and installation. I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to be looking at three main points, which is the set, setting up and using GitHub. And then we're going to look at the dependencies needed for ViewPress. And then we're going to look at installing ViewPress. All right, so to start with, let's look up how we're gonna set up and use GitHub. All right, so basically, if you plan on using these tutorials as guides and you want to start your own project from scratch, then you should create your own repository for your own block. Um, each tutorial in this series involving code is also gonna have a branch in the Code Monkeys block tutorials repository. So if you want the code for a specific tutorial, then you can download a specific branch or clone the repository and switch to one of the remote tracking branches. And we're gonna go over how to download and clone the repository in more detail in the section below. Um, but here is where the repo is. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So basically this is the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. And each branch is gonna to correspond to a specific tutorial. So you get a snapshot of that code there. So here would be the tutorial three code right here. Um, if you just wanted to clone clone the repo or just download this code. You could just come here and do that. And we're gonna go over that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, and then you can also download, clone, or fork the current version of the CodeMonkeys blog. So here's the CodeMonkeys blog repository. Um, and this is for the CodeMonkeys blog as it currently is right now. So you could come here and you could, you know, download it, clone it, fork it. Um, so that's where that is if you want that. And then if you don't have Git installed, then you can check out the installing Git documentation. So right here, and they'll kind of walk you through how to install Git on Linux, on Windows, and um, and on Mac here. So you can check that out if you don't have Git installed. And you can also join GitHub and set up Git if you don't have a, uh, a GitHub account. So right here, they'll just kind of walk you through how you need to set up Git. Um, and uh, I'm going to be using SSH throughout this video to do it. But this right here will set you how to download and install the latest version of Git, set your username in Git, and set, uh, set your commit email address in Git. And then how to either set up the HTTPS or the SSH. So you can go through those steps if you haven't set up um, your GitHub account. So and we're just going to go through how to just create a repository in GitHub in case you want to create a repository um, from scratch because you want to kind of make your own blog and just follow along with uh, with these tutorials here. So a repository is basically a directory where you store the code and other files used in a project and a repository could be a local directory on your computer and it can be stored and accessed online from a website like GitHub. Um, and then if you want to create your own repository for your own project, then you need to do these following steps. So I'll just show you and let me uh, let me just go to GitHub over here and I'll just bring this over here. Like that and let me bring this over here. And so here are the steps that you would take if you wanted to create a new repository. So you can go to your profile page and click on the repositories tab. Um, just go over here, profile page. And then you can click on the repositories tab. And then you can click the plus drop down in the upper right hand corner. And then you can do um, new repository right here, or you can just click on new repository right here. So then you can type a short and descriptive name. So you could just say like something like, you know, my blog right there. And then you could just say, you know, this is my blog and this is the description field and it's optional. Um, and then you can choose if you want the repository to be public or private. And then you can add a readme.md file, which you can use to describe your project in more detail and to document how to install your project. So this would be right there. And then you can add a docket ignore file, which is used to ignore specified files and directories when making a commit. And I recommend selecting the node template from the drop down menu. So right here, you could just filter it and go to, um, to node, and then you could just select that. Um, 
And then you can add your preferred license, which is used to tell others how they can use your code. So you can just kind of select whatever license that you want to use. For example, the uh, GNU General Public License uh, version 3, you could select that one. And um, so then you could then just create this repository right here. Now, the other thing about this is, let's just go to my repositories real quick. And... Let's go to the CodeMonkeys organization. So if you look here, another thing that you can do is you can go to your settings and then you can go to branches right here and then you can change the default branch. So if instead of main, if you wanted it to be master or some, something else for the default branch, you could set that here. Um, and then you can just uh, you know create your own repository if you wanna have your own repository. So if you run into any issues when creating the repository, you want to learn more, then you can check out the create a repo documentation right here, and they'll kind of walk you through the steps. And if you need help determining which license you should use, then you can check out the choose a license, and they'll kind of walk you through a good option for a license for your particular needs. Um, and then you can also learn more about the docket ignore file from the get ignore documentation. And then after successfully creating your repository, you can now clone it and then make a local copy on your computer. All right, so now we're gonna look at how you would clone a repository. So to clone your newly created repository, you need to go to the main page of your repository. So say we wanted to clone our the CodeMonkeys blog repository, you would go here, you would click the code button, and then you would look at your different options here. So you have HTTPS or you have SSH. Um, and then you would just copy that. And then you would replace the example URL down here with your copied URL and then run one of the following commands in your preferred directory. So if you're using SSH, you would run this command right here. If you're using HTTPS, you would run this command right here. Um, and then you would just replace the username and the repository with, um, with what is in your repository for the username and the name of the repository. So if you run into any issues doing this, or if you just want to learn more, then you can check out the cloning a repository link right here and the about remote repositories link right here. Um, and now we're going to look at how to download and clone the code for the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So let me go over here and let me just close out of some of these links over here. We don't need them open anymore. And let's go to the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository right here. And first we're gonna look at how to download the tutorials from GitHub. So if you wanna download the code for a specific tutorial, then you need to go to the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository, select which branch you wanna download. So if we wanted to download the tutorial three branch, we would select it here. And then we would click the code button and select download zip. So right here. And then you would save the zip file to your preferred directory and then you would unzip the file in your preferred directory so this will give you the code for this specific branch in whatever directory you want to download it in and unzip it in all right so instead of downloading the tutorials from github you also have the option to clone and um, and use the tutorials from github this way so if you want to clone the tutorials then you need to run one of the following commands in your preferred directory depending on your preferred method so again Cloning the repository would come here. If we want to do SSH, there's the URL that we need. We would copy that. And then I have, the way that I usually do it is I have a repos directory, and this is where I would clone all of my repositories. So then we would just paste that in. Oh, let me type in uh, get clone first. So you would do get clone, um, and then you would do the repository name right there. And then you can just copy it from right here. There's also the HTTPS way to do it. And then you would just clone this. So this is going to clone it. And then if you run into any issues, you can check out the cloning repository and about remote repositories links right here. And then after successfully cloning the repository, you can run the following command to list both the remote tracking and the local branches. So we can just copy this. And well, first we need to CD into it. So we'll list out here and this is our CodeMonkeys block tutorials repository so then we'll just cd into that and there you go and then we can list out in here and um we could see right now we just have a license and a readme 
.md file, and then um, we can get all of the remote tracking and local branches right here. So you can see we have the master branch. Um, we have tutorial three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, those are all the tutorials we've made so far. We've made posts for them. So if you want the code for them now, if you want to go ahead, you can go check those out. And um, so before switching to one of the remote tracking branches, you can run the filing command to get all of the latest changes from the remote repository without modifying your working directory. So you can do a get fetch here, fetch all of the latest changes. And then if you wanted to work on the code for remote tracking branch, then you need to make a local copy of it, which you can do by running the following command. So it'd be get switch and then whatever branch you wanted to switch to. So to do that, we would do get switch and then say we wanted to do tutorial three. And there you go. Now we're on the tutorial three branch. And if you list it out, you can see that we have all of the code that we made for the uh, tutorial three branch right here. Um, so if you get an error when running the above command and the provided branch name exists, then you want to check your version of git. So you can do a git dash dash version, and this will tell you your version of git that you're using. So you need to be using at least git 2.23 to use the switch command. Um, if you have an older version of git, or if you prefer to not use the switch command, you can alternatively run the command, uh, run the following command to work on the code for remote tracking branch. So this would just be uh, git checkout and then the branch name. Uh, the recommended way to switch branches is with the switch command though. Um, since the checkout command does more than just switching branches, um, which can lead to confusion, especially for people that are new to Git. So if a remote tracking branch is updated um, and you want to integrate those changes into your local branch, then you can switch to the branch like we've done over here, and then you can just run get pull. And this would pull in all of the changes. You can see that we're already up to date here. Um, and then if you edit the code for a branch and attempt to pull, you may run into merge conflicts. So you can check out the about merge conflicts link to learn more about what they are and how to resolve them. Now you only run into merge conflicts. If you make a change in one of these tutorials here, then you pull the code down um, and then say we made some change or something. And then in, a, in the same file, and then the lines were conflicting. Um, so if that happens, then you'd have to resolve a merge conflict there. All right. So that's how you can clone you know, how to create a repository, how to uh, clone a repository, and then how to download the tutorials from GitHub, and then how to clone and, um, and use the CodeMonkey's blog tutorials from GitHub. All right, so we'll just clear this now, and then we're going to be looking at the dependencies needed for GitHub. So before installing ViewPress, you first need to have Node.js version 10 plus, and you can optionally install Yarn 1. So it's recommended to use Yarn 1 if either one of the following applies to you. If you're using Webpack 3 point something, um, in which case you may notice installation issues with NPM. Or if you're going to be closely following along with these tutorials, in which case I recommend using uh, version 1.22.17 since it's the same version being used by the CodeMonkey's blog. And this is going to allow you to avoid any potential issues with packages and with the GitHub Actions workflow, which we're going to look at when we deploy the site. All right, so um, a quick little tip here is that you can use the locally set version of Yarn in the repositories. So the CodeMonkey's blog tutorials and the CodeMonkey's blog repositories both have a local version of Yarn set to version 1.22.17 in a .yarn releases directory. So if we come over here, um, if we list out the hidden files, and then you can cd into .yarn. And then we'll list out in here and then you can see we have a releases directory and then we'll list out in there and then you can see there's the version of yarn um, so this means that if you use the code from the repositories then you'll be able to use the locally set version of yarn instead of having to install the specific local version of yarn yourself you can just use the version that's already in here and if you have a globally installed version of yarn then it's going to look at this version that's in the repository and it's going to use this local version um, and then you can kind of see which version that you have um, and then it'll show that you have version 1.22.17 in this repository so 
Um, the next sections down here are going to show you how to check recurrent versions of Node and Yarn. So we've already seen how to check our current version of Yarn. You just do Yarn-V. Um, and then if you don't have Node or Yarn installed, then you or you want to change the versions, then you can check out the provided resources explaining how to install specific versions, and we'll briefly go into that. So here's how to check your Node version. So if you wanted to just check your Node version, you could run Node-V, and I'm using version 16.11.1. So if you see that output of version 10 or greater, then you continue. Then you can continue on with the ViewPress installation. Uh, so for the CodeMonkeys blog, it's using it's using version 16.11.1. So if you're going to be closely following along with these tutorials, then I'd recommend using the same version to avoid any potential issues. Um, so if you don't see the proper output or you want to use the same version in these tutorials, then you need to either install or upgrade Node. So one way to do it is to use a system version of Node. So you go to Node.js and then you can download um, a version that you want to use. And uh, you can download a compatible version. So you could download the version that we're using here or just some version that's 10 or greater. And if you previously installed a system version of Node from Node.js, then you can go back to the site and download a newer version to upgrade your current version. Um, but if you're a developer that needs to use multiple multiple versions of Node when working on different projects, then I recommend using a Node version manager. So before installing a Node version manager like NVM or FNM, um, I recommend uninstalling your system version of Node, NPM, and any globally installed NPM packages to avoid any potential issues. And then you can check out these posts right here. So installing uh, Node version manager NV, uh, and NVM. And this will go over the installation and different usages and stuff. Um, if you're interested in using MVM to have specific versions of Node for specific projects, which I recommend if you're using, you know, multiple different versions of Node for different, uh, multiple different versions of Node for different projects. Uh, you also have, uh, you can also look at this link right here for Fast Node Manager, and this is the Node Manager that I recommend just because it's faster than MVM. Uh, we have documented the Linux, what install on Linux, Mac OS, and on Windows, and kind of how to set it up for different shells right here. You have Bash, Z Shell, Fish Shell, PowerShell. Uh, and then we go over some usage stuff, so how to set up completions for Bash and for Z Shell. Uh, so you can take a look at this post if you're interested in installing this. And you can, you know, be sure to look at the documentation for FNM as well. Uh, you can check out the documentation right here. And they kind of walk you through very similar steps. Uh, so those are the node version managers that I recommend. And let me just go back to the ViewPress post over here. So, uh, you know, so again, my preferred way to manage my node versions is with FNM. So after installing a compatible version of node, you're now going to have the, um, NPM, which is the default package manager for node. Um, and if you prefer, you can use NPM to install ViewPress. Um, but if you're going to be closely following along with these tutorials, then I recommend using yarn, which is what we're going to be using. Uh, so now we'll look at checking the yarn version. So like we already did over here, we have a yarn version of 1.22.17. And then if you don't see your preferred version of yarn, then it's recommended to install a global version of yarn one, which can then be set to a local version of yarn for the project. Um, so to learn more about how to install a global version of Yarn 1, how to use the global version to set a local version of Yarn for a project and other commonly used commands, you can check out this post right here. So uh, if you just want to look at how to install it, so to install the global version right here, you would just run this command right here. So after installing Node, you can just, they recommend to install Yarn 1 with NPM now. So you just do NPM install uh, dash dash global Yarn and then this will install your global version of Yarn. And then you can look into how to set a local version of Yarn. So like we have over here, we have a local version of Yarn that exists in this project. Uh, so to do that, you can just go to, so say you created your own repository, you can just go to that repository. 
Um, and then you can then run this command right here, yarn policies, set the version, and then you can just set the version. So say you wanted this version right here, you would just add that um, where you see this version right there. So this would be how you set a local version of yarn for your project. All right. So now that we've set a local version of yarn and we've seen how to install yarn globally, we can um, go back to the ViewPress tutorial three post and let's go back down to this section on yarn and be sure that um, after you install a global version and you have your local version set, uh, that you update the got the dot get ignore file and add a dot get attributes file as described in the installing yarn one post. Um, this will allow you to ignore certain yarn related files that you don't want to push up to GitHub. Um, so if you do that, if you follow along with this, then it'll it'll set that up for you properly. Uh, so again, the re recommended version and repositories um, is uh, remember that the recommended version of Yarn to use with your project if you're closely following along with these tutorials is version 1.22.17. And if you use the code from the repositories, then there will be a provided, then we're going to provide that local version of Yarn which you can use instead of installing that specific version of Yarn yourself. All right, so now let's go over how to install the tutorial packages. So if you download it or clone the code from the CodeMonkey's blog tutorials repository, then you wanna first check your version of Yarn by running this command in the project directory. So like we did up here, yarn-v, and we got version 1.22.17. And then you can you know, make sure that you're using that version and then you can install all the packages being used in the project by running the following command in the root project directory. So right here, if we just come back out into the root of the project, so this would just be the CodeMonkey's block tutorials. Let me just clear this screen. Um, then you could just run yarn and this would install all of the dependencies for the project. And then just make sure that you're not in the master branch when checking the version since it doesn't have the .yarn directory and that you have that global version of yarn installed. Now, also, whenever you go to a new tutorial, a new branch in the CodeMonkey's block tutorials repository, you can also just run yarn in case there was any um, installed package that you would then have to install for that specific branch, just run yarn whenever you switch to that branch for the first time. All right, or whenever there's an update, say a new package gets pushed up or something, then you can just run yarn to install those dependencies. All right, so if you're using your own repository and you want to install ViewPress yourself, then you can use one of these installation methods described below. So when installing ViewPress, we have the option to use the Create ViewPress Site Generator for a quick start installation, or we have the option to do a manual installation. So we're gonna go over both of the installation methods, but the future tutorials are gonna be based off of the manual installation. All right, so here is how you would do it with the quick start. So using the generator is gonna help scaffold a basic site structure for you by creating common directories and files found in ViewPress sites. So to use the generator, we want to run the filing command in your preferred directory using your preferred package manager. All right, so let's say that we made a repository and we cloned it down and we just named that quick start project. So say this was the name of our repository. Then we can just CD into that. Now I'm not gonna make a new repository and then clone it down just because I would then just delete it. So this is just for an example. Um, so now that we've uh, CD'd in to it, if I could spell clear, um, then we can just run one of these commands. So you can run it with yarn or with npm. So we can just run this command right here. And then you can see that you have the option to put that optional directory name. So if you put that optional directory name, it will then install um, ViewPress and all of these files and directories inside of that directory. So if you're already in the root of your repository, then you can just run it without the, that, that optional directory name. So we can run this command and this will then 
ask us some questions. So you can enter custom values for each question or press enter to accept the defaults. And then here's an example of running the command in our directory, that quick start project. So here we can just use that default value that's there, or we can put in the value ourselves and then we press enter. And then if we come back over here, we can see that what's the description of it. So we'll just put in learning you press, press enter. And then what's your email? So we'll just say our email is your email at example.com. That'll be our email. And then they'll ask us our name. So then we can just put in your name and then the repo. So this will be the URL to the repo for the project. So we can put in that example URL and then you can see that it creates all these directories and files for us. So this scaffolded basic site is going to be in a docs directory in your current directory, which in our example is that quick start project. And then all of the created directories and files are going to be in there that are listed above there. So if we LS here, then we can CD into docs and there you go. We have a package.json and then that source directory. So if you're using NPM, so if we uh, ls flag a to see the hidden files, you can see we have a docket ignore file. Now, if you're using npm, you'll see a dot npm ignore file in the docs directory instead of that docket ignore file. All right, so using that optional directory name. So like I mentioned that if you use that optional directory name, it's gonna create this view press project inside of that optional directory name. And if you're already in the project, uh, the root of the project directory, then you don't have to pass in that optional directory name. Um, so then the answers to these questions, they can be found in that package.json file. So if we open that up, you can see these are our answers right here. So we have the name of Quick Start Project. Our version is 0 .0 0.0.1. Description of Learning ViewPress. Um, our entry point right here is index.js. The author is going to be whatever your name is that you inputted, your email, the repository, so the URL to the GitHub repository right there. And then it's going to give us these different scripts to, um, to set up the dev environment and then to build ViewPress. And then we have a license that it gives us and then this dev dependency um, for ViewPress right there. And then we're gonna go over the contents of the package.json file in the next tutorial. But if you're interested in learning, learning more now, then check out the package.json guide. All right, and so let me just exit out of that. So like I mentioned, you can CD into docs. And then if you wanted to install um, all of your site's packages using your preferred package manager, then you could just run yarn in here. Or if you were using NPM, then you would just run NPM install. Now, after running yarn, if you wanted to use the same version of ViewPress that the CodeMonkeys blog is using and that the tutorials are using, then you can run this command right here. And that'll give you the exact same version that we're currently using. And then to start the hot reloading local development server, you can just run yarn dev or if you're using npm, npm run dev. Now, and then it should be running at localhost um, port 8080. All right, so you could, if you were doing the quick start installation, then you should then see that development environment running there. Now I'm not gonna run all these commands because it takes a little bit for it to run. So we're just gonna move on to the manual installation, which is, what the future tutorials are going to be based off of. All right, so let me just get out of here and let me clear this screen. And then what we're going to do with the manual installation, it lets us build our site from scratch. So unlike the quick start method, which sort of scaffolds that basic site structure for you. And as mentioned above, the following tutorials are going to be based off of this, right? So like we talked about. So that's why we're going to be focusing mainly on this one. Now, if you already have an existing project and you would like to keep the documentation inside of it, then you can start from the third command here. All right, so we want to navigate to our preferred directory, which should be where you cloned your site's repository. So say you made your own site and we'll just call it um, project directory. And then we'll CD into project directory. And this would just be the name of the repository that you cloned if you created your own repository. Um, all right, so now that we're inside of there, then we can initialize the project with yarn in it. So let's run that command. And, or if you're using NPM, you could run NPM in it. So after running this command, we're going to be asked to answer several different questions. So the 
for the name we'll just accept the default the version will accept the default and then we'll say for the description that we are learning ViewPress. we'll keep the entry point the same and then we can just add this example um, github address for the repository and then we can just put in your name which would just be your name and then we can just leave that license for now as the default we'll leave it as private and now after answering all these questions we're going to get a package.json file and that file is used to describe the metadata about our site so if we list out in here we see we have that package.json file so then if we go into that package then we can see that we have our name, a project directory, our version of 1.0.0, .0, our description of learning ViewPress, our entry point, which is index.js, and then we have that link to the repository, the author's name, and then the license. All right, so let's quit out of that. And like I mentioned, we'll be covering those contents of the packs.json file in more detail in the next um, in the next video. So now what we want to do is we want to install ViewPress into the project. So you have two options here. You can use Yarn or you can use NPM. We're going to be using Yarn. So we'll copy that and then we'll paste this in. Now this will take a little bit of time to, uh, to run here, but this is going to install ViewPress into our project. And that um, flag capital D is going to set it up as a dev dependency in the package.json file. So after we do that, um, we'll run this command, the Yarn upgrade. Uh, ViewPress to set it for that version 1.8.2, which is the version that the CodeMonkeys blog and the tutorials will be using. So this will take some time. Run here, linking the dependencies, and there you go. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll just upgrade. We'll run this command to set that version that we want, that exact version. And now we can see we have, and let me just clear this. Now you can see we have that yarn.lock file, we have our node modules file, and if we go into that package.json file, you can see that we have the specific version of ViewPress for 1.8.2. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our first document for the site. So we'll just copy this command. And what this command does is it's going to make a docs directory in our project directory right here. And then we're going to create a readme.nd file, and we're going to give it this these contents right here of just hollow view, uh, hollow view press so we'll run that and then we'll list out we see we have that docs directory so then we'll go into that docs directory and list out and there we have that readme and then if we go inside of that readme we'll see we have hello view press all right uh, let me just quit that so now that we've done that, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add this, the following scripts objects to the package.json file. All right, so let's go into package.json. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add this right here. So we'll come down to right here and then we'll paste this in and let me just uh, space this over a little bit, format it a bit here. And um, we also need to add a comma right there. All right, so what we've just done here is we've added these the scripts objects. So what this is gonna do is it lets us um, run yarn docs colon dev, and then that's gonna run this command right here, view press dev docs to build our development environment. And then we're, if we wanted to build the site, we could run yarn docs colon build, and then that'll run this command view press build docs, and then that would then build our site for us. All right, so let's quit out of this. And we just went over these contents right there. And then we can run this command right here, yarn docs dev. And then this will set up our local development server. And then it should now be running right here at this link. So if you click on this link, then you can see here it is. And we just have our simple site up here with Hello ViewPress, and this is the beginning of um, of making the website right here. So uh, you also have the option to use npm again. Um, now, just to summarize, in this video we went over setting up and using GitHub. We created 
a repository. So if you want to create a repository for your own specific project, we went over how to clone a repository. Um, and then we went over how to download the CodeMonkeys block tutorials from GitHub, uh, how to clone the tutorials from GitHub. And then we went over some commands that you can run to uh, check out certain branches. Um, then we went over the different dependencies. So we went over the requirements of Node, um, give you some resources to be able to install different version managers for Node if you don't have it installed. Um, went over the version of Node that we want for the CodeMonkeys blog, which was 16.11.1. We went over, um, then we went over uh, checking the Yarn version, um, how to set up, how to install that global version of Yarn, that local version of Yarn, how it's already provided in the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials and in the CodeMonkeys blog repositories for you. Um, so you don't have to set it if you're using those, but if you're using your own project, then we have resources here that you can use to set it for uh, for your project. And remember that the version that we're using is 1.22.17. And then um, we went over installing the packages. So on a particular branch, you can just make sure you're using the right version of Yarn, install the packages with Yarn, and then you'll have all of the, the dependencies that you need for that particular branch. And then if you check out a different branch, you can run the command again to install any new packages. Uh, then we went over installing ViewPress, so we went over the quick start guide, and then we talked about the manual installation, which is what we will be using throughout the rest of this series. All right, so in the next tutorial, we're going to be summarizing our current directory structure, as well as going over the record, the recommended directory, directory structure for a ViewPress site. All right, so see you in the next video.